In this video, I'll be showing you the Boeing and Airbus experiment never built trijet aircraft, including a Boeing 747 trijet design. What were these designs? What would have they been like? And what is the future of trijet aircraft? Let's find out. Back in the 1970s, trijets were all the range. Lockheed Martin and McDonnell Douglas brought their two wide-body designs to the market, the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar and the DC-10, respectively, that filled an important market gap between the Boeing 737 and Boeing 747. For Boeing and later Airbus, this middle market of 250 to 270 passengers for a range of around 5,000 nautical miles was too good to pass up. And even today, it's a market that still draws plenty of interest. You can watch my video on this market here. But they couldn't enter this market with just any normal plane. After all, they had to bring to the market an aircraft that was big enough for all these passengers and could still fly over oceans. Back in the 1970s, ETOPS rules dictated that an aircraft with only two engines could only fly around 60 minutes from the nearest airport at all times. This made flights across the Atlantic uneconomical at best for twin-engine aircraft, and in the case of the Pacific, impossible. First, the answer lay in a trijet design. An aircraft that was a wide body, but cheaper to operate than the four-engined Boeing 707. First up to the plate was Boeing. They already had an excellent aircraft platform, the Boeing 747-200, so why not simply remove an engine and make it more economical? This Boeing would go on to study the development of a shorter 747 with only three engines, the center engine of which would be fitted in the tail with an S-duck intake, similar that to the L-1011. The Boeing 747-300 trijet would have several advantages over its competition. It would have been able to carry around 300 passengers to a range greater than 5,000 nautical miles. And thanks to its large design, a freighter version would have had plenty of room for cargo. Boeing would have targeted this aircraft to the transatlantic markets for those airlines that didn't need the flexibility of a larger four-engine Boeing 747 and to Japan's market that required a high-density Boeing 747 for commuter routes. However, engineering studies showed that a significant redesign of the Boeing 747 wings would be necessary when developing the concept, which would put at risk the idea of maintaining the same 747 handling characteristics to minimize pilot retraining. Doesn't that sound familiar? Boeing decided instead to pursue a shortened four-engined 747, resulting in the Boeing 747SP. But Boeing never really gave up on the trijet dream. According to Flight International in 1978, Boeing was right at the cusp of announcing a new trijet design after being pushed to the market by American Airlines. Called the Boeing 777-100, Boeing envisioned this aircraft as a single-deck trijet, much like the Lockheed Martin L-1011. It would retain the Boeing 727S bend trijet design, which costs more per aircraft but saved fuel and maintenance over the plane's lifetime. This Boeing 777-100 trijet would fit into a new 1980s Boeing lineup, including a twin-engine Boeing 757 to replace its 727, a twin-engine 767 to challenge the Airbus A300, and the trijet 777 concept for transatlantic travel. The Boeing 757 and 767 both won customers in their early days and got a significant boost when those pesky ETOPS regulations were changed in 1985. With the news that a twin jet could perform a trijet role and new engine technology made a third engine unneeded, Boeing would redesign the 777-100 into the twin engine 777-200 we know and love today. But what about Airbus? 
Did they ever consider a trijet design? While the Airbus A300, its first aircraft to the market, was always meant to be a short-range twinjet, it's actually the tail of the second generation version, the A330 and A340 series, that gets more interesting. During the development of the A330 and A340, Airbus held discussions with McDonnell Douglas to produce a long-range aircraft together, which would have been designated the AM300. This aeroplane would have combined the wing of the A330 with the fuselage of the McDonnell Douglas MD-11. MD needed a new wing for their MD-11, and Airbus needed an aircraft design with powerful engines. Airbus had initially planned a four engines for the A340, but couldn't ignore the fuel savings of using three engines instead. Alas, this deal fell through after a surge of orders for the MD-80 and MD-11 in 1988, with McDonnell Douglas deciding to go their own way. But this story will have to wait for another day, so subscribe if you want to find out more about this lost history of Airbus and McDonnell Douglas. More recently, in 2008, Airbus has revealed a patent for a trijet double tail design. It looks very much the same as an Airbus A320, but actually has a split tail that has a third through engine mounted on the end. This concept tackles the problems of a trijet head-on, with three smaller engines able to beat a twin engine plane on fuel efficiency. And the tail design means that it is much quieter than other aircraft. Whether or not Airbus sees this as the future concept for the Airbus A320 series remains to be seen. But more likely, it's a patent to prevent Boeing from following through with their own version of the concept. Today, we still see some trijet designs on the market, although not for mainline commercial aircraft. Many supersonic aircraft have adopted a trijet design to either accommodate noise requirements, such as the Spike 512, or simply because they can't get enough power to move faster than the speed of sound. Alas, the trijet design may never make a true comeback, and just like how the trijet led to the downfall of the four-engine aircraft, it seems the very same has happened with the introduction of twin-engine aircraft. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. I love making these videos and it's through you viewers, yes, you watching right now, for making this happen through likes, comments, and subscribing to my channel. I can't wait to see you on the next video and have a great day.